that a lot of this equipment and technology is going to make its way into China, then you are out of your mind. You haven't been following anything. Because that's what's going to happen. They're going to get their hands on our technology. Well, one of the worst things is when we left the airport, we had left all kinds of stuff, and it never occurred to this stupid general, um, Mark Biley, to order everyone to destroy anything. So the, when we had escaped, the escape, when we deserted the Air Force Base, they came in, what, maybe like a couple of hours after we left, and they just grabbed everything. Computers, laptops, computer chips, hard drives, whatever. What are we thinking? What are these people in charge for? They are there to protect us. That's why we put them in office. I mean, I don't know, again, I don't know how Biden got in office, but whoever voted for him, this is on you. This is your vote if you voted for Joe Biden. This is your stain. You're responsible for what he does. And it's not just this. I mean, you got to look at a few screw-ups that this guy has had. Not just one, not just two. All right, Afghan, the economy, inflation, gas prices. What else can this guy screw up? No matter whatever he touches, he's got the reverse Midas touch. Whatever he touches turns to shit. He cannot do a thing right. He is an incompetent asshole. Now, the problem I have with it is the media gives him a free pass. The media is turning around blaming Trump for all this. I'm like, how can you blame Donald Trump? Biden could have left everything in place that Trump had, and it, it might have worked out, it might not have. But how can Biden get up there during his press conference and say, well, the same thing would have happened on May 31st? How the hell do you know? You know because you, they, they, don't, they don't respect you overseas. Just like they didn't respect the black guy, the, the Muslim. Obama, okay? They don't respect them. They, if, if they made a threat, they hey, listen, um, you know, if you invade after we leave, you know, um, we're going to have to come in and kill you and your family. They don't consider that a threat. But when Donald Trump looks them in the eye with those crazy eyes of his and goes, hey, idiots, I'm going to conk your heads together like Mo, first of all, from the Three Stooges. All right? Now, if we, if we leave and you guys don't let a peaceful government come in here, guess what? I'm going to send a bunch of guys back here to fucking kill you. Not just you, your family, and everyone you know. Promise, threat, call it whatever you want, but that's what I'm going to do. They were deathly afraid of him that he would do that because he went and killed their number two guy. He actually went in and killed the number two Taliban guy for no reason. For no reason. And, 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 there, and remember the media complaining about it. What did we go kill him for? What did we go kill him for? We went to kill him to send a message just like the mafia does. That's what we were doing. That's the strength that we had. We don't have it anymore. But that's the strength that we had when Donald Trump was president. The same strength we had when Ron Reagan was president. Remember Muammar Gaddafi? What's the first thing Reagan do? Reagan sent a <laughs> bomb in and killed his brother. You've got to send these guys a message. They don't understand any other language. They don't understand what being nice is, what turning the other cheek is, a kiss in the head. They don't, they don't understand that. They don't get tucked in at night. These are guys that grew up in dirt. They didn't have anyone coddling them. So when you come to coddle them, they go, you know what? I'm going to embarrass the shit out of you once you turn around. And that's exactly what they did. Exactly. They got on the national stage and embarrassed the hell out of our country and our people and embarrassed the hell out of Joe Biden, uh, whoever the vice president is. Who is the vice president anyway? Oh, Kamala Harris, that broad 
the, the tuna looking broad, and uh, what, what's in, in Nancy Pelosi. And, and don't think Congress could not have stopped this. If anyone tells Congress was in charge. They have had a majority in Congress for three years. They have had the Senate for a year, for not a year now, but almost a year. They could have stopped this even before Joe Biden stepped in and fucked it all up. But they didn't. So, how does the media spin this? Well, if you watched anything yesterday, uh, which was which was Sunday, and watched uh, CNN, uh, Jake Tapper, whatever that stupid show is called that he's got on in the morning, uh, everything on there is fucking ridiculous. So he gets on there, and he says to this guy, he asks him, how could Joe Biden be surprised by this? I mean, Jake, where have you been for the last year, for Christ's sakes? I mean, Joe's surprised by every. Are you surprised that he gets up in the fucking morning? Are you kidding me? He's surprised by everything. He is surprised when his plane lands and he can get down the steps quick enough to get out of uh, wherever he goes back home, Delaware or whatever, and goes back to the White House on Monday. He is surprised that he makes it down the steps of the goddamn airplane without falling flat on his face. That's, that's Joe Biden. How can you ask, how could Biden be surprised by this? But, Jake, you redeemed yourself tonight. And I was watching a, a CNN, um, they, they had, uh, of course, only CNN does it so well, where they have like 18 people on a Zoom call at the same time. Uh, uh, Tapper, uh, they had uh, Sanjay Gupta, of course, David Axelrod, <laughs> uh, who's the other broad with the long horse face with the blonde hair, whoever she is. And, of course, uh, Jeffrey Tubin, who, <laughs> when I look at Tubin, <laughs> I hate to laugh at this, but I got to wonder, when I see him on a Zoom call from the, from the chest up, I'm wondering if he's got any pants on, if he's jerking off under the table. I mean, <laughs> it just, it just, I, I don't even know how they could bring this guy back as an expert. Well, anyway, um, here's what Jake Tapper had to say today, which, uh, like I said, he redeemed himself from the other day. President Biden keeps trying to change the subject from this inept withdrawal, which just let's be frank here. If you withdraw 2,500 troops and then you have to send 6,000 back, that's not planned. Right. That's on its face an example of a failure. I got to admit, every once in a while, Tapper does wow me with the fact that he almost has his feet on the ground. Once in a while. There were times when I think he, and I really think that Jake Tapper wants to be normal about all this stuff, but he can't because he's on CNN. You know, you're not allowed to be normal. You've got, you got to pull the company line and tow the company line or you're going to get fired. I sort of understand that, but Tapper just has this look of disgust on his face sometimes when he has to talk about things. I understand he bashed the crap out of Trump, and I get it, but I don't think Jake Tapper believes half the stuff that he says on CNN. It just doesn't look like it. I, I know it ruins his credibility a little bit, but like I said, every once in a while he has a fit of groundedness like that line there. And speaking of a fit of ground, there's another woman who, who, you know, way far off to the left. I mean, she's so far off to the left, it's ridiculous. But another woman who has a fit of, um, uh, uh, of normalcy once in a while, and I guess maybe she's off at meds or something, and all of a sudden she gets normal, is Mika Brzezinski of MSNBC. Uh, she actually uh, said today, um, she got vilified by the left for saying it. But, you know, she blamed Trump a little bit for what happened, but she also ended up blaming Biden, which, you know, like I said, the left kind of really vilified her for it. But uh, it, it, it's amazing what, what the left does to people that say, hey, look, it was Biden's fault. <laughs> and and they, they just do not, you know, it, there's nothing, I don't know. Like, like I said, here's a woman who comes out and actually says something that makes sense. And she gets vilified for it uh, on, on Twitter and everything. So, but like a, a, a fit of normalcy for Mika Brzezinski. I don't know what her um, what a quit looking uh, quit looking husband had to say, uh, Joe Scarborough. But he's uh, he's really a toady, man. He he fell for her shit hook, line, and sinker, and he really switched around what what he really was.
He was a conservative congressman. And all of a sudden, he's so far left, he's got his head up her ass, so far up he can taste her food with, with her tongue. That, that's, that's what he's got. I, I don't know how it happened. She had a, hadn't fallen into some kind of a spell. Maybe a father concocted some kind of, uh, some kind of potion in his laboratory, but who knows. Uh, the last one is Clarissa Ward. Clarissa Ward, who is a, um, she's a correspondent for CNN, and she's over in Kabul. Uh, reporting. So Saturday, she's on. She's on there. She's got a nice red blouse on, her blonde hair, waving makeup and everything. Oh, you know, talking about everything. And then the next day, Sunday, she's dressed in like a hijab, hair all covered up. You know, just see the forehead and everything, and the face. That's it. No makeup whatsoever. And she actually uttered. This line. They're just chanting death to America, but they seem friendly at the same time. Yeah, they seem like a bunch of friendly chaps. Uh, they're the type you want to invite over for tea. Just don't let them get near the women and the children because they're going to kill them. That's what they do. They don't like women. They're going to kill the women. There's no doubt about it. You know, if you're a woman in Afghanistan right now, you're pretty much dead. We actually help build schools to educate the women over there. It ain't going to work anymore. Those schools pretty much are dead. The women are dead over there. They do not respect women whatsoever. So for her to utter that line, and then I think, I, she did a, a, an explanation a couple of months ago on the Taliban. So I don't know, the, you know, CNN's been pushing this Taliban thing with her. Uh, I taught her how to speak Arabic or Farsi or whatever the hell they speak over there. And then um, she was upset because the, the Taliban, the people asked her to move to one side, uh, basically because she was a woman. Now, you know, I don't understand how she, you know, could even think to say that line that they seem friendly. They're not friendly. They are the enemy. Joe Biden thought they were friendly. When he said, uh, you know, uh, don't, um, don't, don't come right in and overtake anything. The generals thought they were friendly when they go, listen, uh, uh, you know, don't overtake anything when we leave, um, please. And they said, oh, duh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, we'll do that, don't worry. We won't, we won't, we won't do anything. We'll, we'll be nice and peaceful. What a bunch of fucking pansy-ass morons are running this country. It is utterly sickening. All right, that's Chuck Berghoff around base, Nancy Sinatra. These boots are made for walking. We've always played this song. It's Johnny Sexton's World. I'm Johnny Sexton. You keep saying you got something for me. Something you call love, but confess. You've been a mess where you shouldn't have been a mess in. And now someone else is getting all your best. These boots are made for walking, and that's just what they'll do. One of these days, these boots are gonna walk all over you. Yeah. You keep lying when you ought to be true then And you keep losing when you ought to not bet You keep saying it when you ought to be ashamed Now what's right is right, but you ain't been right yet These boots are made for walking And that's just what they'll do one of these days, these boots are gonna walk all over you. You keep playing where you shouldn't be playing. And you keep thinking that you'll never get burned. A brand new box of matches, yeah. And what he knows, you ain't.